What's up guys, Justin here, continuing our series on Unreal Engine. So in the last video, we gave kind of an overview of the workspace within Unreal Engine. In this video, I wanna talk about how to start bringing objects into your Unreal Engine levels so that you can start building stuff inside Unreal Engine. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the different kinds of objects that you can add into your Unreal Engine levels. So if you remember from the last video, any object you can add to a level is called an actor. So anything that gets brought in, whether it's your controllers, whether it's your actual objects within your model, all of those different things are called actors. And I want to talk about a couple different places and ways that you can add actors into your level. And so to start off, one way that you can add different actors into your level is to use the modes menu on the left hand side. So the modes menu contains a number of different things you can add to your model. So you can add things like different pieces of geometry, like boxes or spheres or cubes, um, things like that, as well as other things that you can add like lighting. So for example, if I was to click on my lights and I was to add a point light, you can see how this is automatically gonna bring a point light in that's actually casting light on different things within your level. So it's really easy to just click and drag and add these different things in. And then you can adjust the different things or the different properties of these objects using the details menu. So like for example, I can turn up the intensity of my point light um, by clicking and dragging in the intensity section you can adjust the light color um, different radiuses all of that all of those properties for those objects are going to show up inside your details section and so once you bring these things in you can transform them and move them around using the various tools within your viewport and so there's three different tools that you can use in here in order to do that so the first is the translation widget and so basically what the translation widget is is whenever you click on something on an actor inside your workspace you can see how you're gonna get these little arrows um, so it's gonna select whatever your object is and if you have the translation widget selected then what this is gonna do is that's that's gonna let you click and drag these in order to move things around in the level so you can see for example that I can move things up and down by clicking and dragging the blue object or if I come in here I can move this along the blue and the green axis by clicking on this little square right here. So you can see how that's moving that along this axis without changing the red orientation. So um, you can use that to get really precise on the way that you move different things around inside your level. Um, in addition to that, you can also rotate objects. So let's say, for example, that I was to bring in, we'll bring in just a basic cube. We'll bring it up like this. You can select the second option, which brings up the rotation widget. What the rotation widget does is it allows you to rotate things inside your viewport. So, and then the last one is the scaling widget. And what that does is that allows you to adjust the way that things are scaled. So you can see how by clicking and dragging on these, I can make this longer or shorter, bigger or smaller. So. I mean, one way that I could do this if I wanted to is I could click and I could scale this object so that it's about the length of this side over here. So you can use the scaling widget to adjust the size of those objects. So in addition to doing that, if you want to get more precise with the way you, you adjust things, and I'm not going to get super in-depth with this right now, but you can also select the option for geometry editing and what that'll do is that'll allow you to adjust the individual geometric pieces within this object so I can come in here and I can select different faces and move them around in order to um, really kind of adjust the way that these things look or to really adjust the size of these different things these different parts and pieces within my level individually and so you can use the edit function in order to adjust things like your different faces or you can use the extrude if you want to create new faces so you can see how what this did when I had the extrude option available is it creates a new set of vertices right here and you can also adjust your individual vertices by clicking on them if you want to so this allows 
for some fairly complex geometric editing if you decide that that's the way that you want to do this. So we'll talk more about this in a future video, but I wanted to give you an idea of some things you can do in here in order to adjust the objects that you bring in. And so you can also bring in things like stairs. So if I was to bring in like a linear stair right here, and we'll go ahead and delete out our box, but you can adjust the different properties of your stairs by scrolling down into your brush settings. And you can adjust the height and the length of your different stair risers. So you can adjust these things using the brush settings inside your details. And one thing I want to note, and this is something, it's more of a teaser for a future video um, than anything else. So you can also set objects up so that they simulate physics. So like for example, if I was to take this sphere, click on it, and then go down in the details section, and I was to click on simulate physics, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my player controller so that when I first start, this controller is basically where I'm going to start within my level. I'm just going to set this up so when I press the play button, it's looking directly at this. But if I click the play button, you can see how this is actually going to simulate the physics of the sphere rolling based on that. So in that way, you can come in and you can uh, simulate a whole bunch of different things inside your uh, levels. Um, but that's just kind of a teaser. We'll talk about that in a future video as well. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is how to bring in external objects. So the mode section contains a lot of great, like more primitive ge geometric options and lighting options and that kind of thing. Well, sometimes what you want to do is you want to bring in geometry that you've created in a third party modeling program like SketchUp or 3ds Max or Maya or um, a lot of different um, 3D modeling programs. Well, in this case, what I would do is we'd be able to bring that in using the content browser. And in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to export an object from SketchUp using Datasmith. And I've made a video about that on my other channel that I will link to in the notes down below. But basically what we would do is let's say I wanted to bring in this very simple table. I would just uh, export that as an Unreal Datasmith file. And what I would want to do what I would want to do is I want to I would want to export that into the content folder of my test project. So in this case, I'm going to I've created a folder called SketchUp Models, and I'm going to go ahead and put this in here, and I'm just going to call this Table. And you can see how I have set as type Unreal Data Smith set up, but I'm going to click the button for Export, and so that's going to export that object with materials. Well now. You can see how in this case I'm already linked to that folder, so it's asking if I want to automatically import um, what I added in that folder. In this case, I'm going to say no, and I'm going to do this the long way. So I'm just going to go up to import Unreal Datasmith file, and I'm going to find that SketchUp model that I brought in. I'm going to double click on it. It's going to ask me where I want to import that content. In this case, I'm going to put it in the SketchUp models folder, and I'm going to click OK. And it's going to ask me if I want to bring in my geometry, my materials and textures, lights, cameras, all those different things. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and say yes. So I'm going to click the button for import. And so you can see how that gets brought in um, as its own object in here. And you need to be careful um, just the way that things are modeled in various programs. Like for example, if I was to try to move things around right now, since these are all modeled as different components, you can see how they move around separately. Or you can come in here and you can actually select the entire actor table object that gets brought in in order to move that around. But you'll notice what happens is these show up in your content browser. And so now you can click and drag these in if they don't get automatically imported. So for example, if I wanted to bring in another copy of that table, I could just click and drag that in. And so what happens is as you start developing folders down here with different models in them, um, you can click and drag and uh, basically have a whole library of different things that you can bring in really quickly and really easily. And one other thing to note is you could also use this to model your entire level and just bring the whole thing in from an exterior 3D modeling program. So if you didn't want to use um, objects like this one in order to make up your uh, make up your level, you could just model the whole thing using 
an exterior 3D modeling program. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. It should give you a pretty good overview of how to bring actors into your levels. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you found this helpful, um, if there's anything that you use when you're doing this. I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new content every week. Um, as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.